laparoscopic gastrectomy for gastric cancer following open room y gastric bypass, uh, once again from the Monsane School of Medicine group. This time will be presented by Dr. Ramin Rupuro. Uh, good morning and thank you for the podium privileges. If you please run the video. Uh, this is a video regarding a 63-year-old uh, female who had open gastric bypass about 23 years ago and recently presented to our clinic with complaint of nausea, vomiting, and abdominal uh, pain. Okay. So basically, we started our workup with the uh, upper GI, which showed uh, severe narrowing of the gastrojejunostomy, no clear evidence of the math. So we did a biopsy, which eventually showed a moderately differentiated adenocarcinoma with no evidence of the metastatic disease. So plan was made to take her to the operating room for a laparoscopic gastrectomy. Uh, we entered the abdomen using open Hassan technique. And extensive adhesive lysis were done, as you can imagine, because the original surgery was open. Uh, we used a combination of cold scissors and energy source to accomplish the adhesiolysis. Once the adhesiolysis is done, we identified our left and right limbs of the crews, uh, created a retrogastric or retroesophageal tunnel, basically, and circled the G junction with the Penrose drain. This was used for atraumatic handling of the tissue. As you see here. We then went back down, identified our gastric remnant, started mobilizing laterally, uh, considering the oncologic principles of the surgery. We kept all the mesentery as much as possible with the gastric remnant. Once this mobilization was complete, the posterior aspect of the remnant was visualized and the rule limb was identified here, which was originally brought up as a retrogastric, retrocolic fashion. So we try to define our ruling a little bit better here. Of course, it's not easy once the original surgery was open and a lot of adhesions here. So the ruling is now defined here again. We went back up, put two stay sutures on the esophagus, and then back again down and divide the gastric remnant transversely below the level of the gastric pouch. And the reason we did that so, although the gastric remnant was not communicating with the gastric pouch, however, it was pretty much plastered to the posterior aspect of the pouch. And uh, considering the risk of the perforation and cancer serous pillage, we decided it was not worth to divide. So we proceeded with the unblocked resection. So, once we divided the gastric remnant here, the gastrojejunostomy has a better visualization. We proceeded with more mobilization of the gastrojejunostomy to find the anastomosis. And then we used the linear stapler to divide our G junction just below the G junction. And the reason we did that so the anatomy was way down on the gastrojejunostomy. We had enough proximal margin. And by doing below the G junction, we had a better cough for reconstruction by this way. Use the stay sutures here to hold it up steady. Use additional firing. Then we went down back again, divided our rule limb about 10 centimeter distal to the gastrojejunostomy to have a proper margin uh, in terms of oncological, oncologic aspect of the surgery. By doing this right now, the whole specimen is divided anatomically. The rest of the attachments were divided using energy source. We tried to keep the lymphatics and mesentery as much as possible with the specimen here. specimen retrieved through the endocache through the abdominal wall using a wound protector also. So as you see here, a specimen consists of proximal part of the gastric remnant, gastric pouch, and proximal portion of the rolling and gastric mesentery. 
Uh, here we open this specimen and show severe structure of the gastroejejunostomy. Scope couldn't pass even during interoperatively and uh, no evidence of the clear mass. We then proceeded with restabilizing the gastrointestinal continuity. We used 25 millimeter circular stapler. Using energy device, we did our gastrostomy here. And then we introduced the Orville through the NG tube. The sutures NG is separated from the Orville. And then the stapler handle was introduced through the abdominal wall using the wound protector into the rolling. You see the candy cane is coming up. Spike is introduced through the jejunal wall. Aligned with the Orville. Locked now. Again, we use the stage sutures here on and off to hold on the esophagus to make sure it's not retracted back. Here you see it's tight because the saliva is pushed out and it's fired. Stapler is slowly pulled back carefully. The opening on the genome was closed using a linear stapler and was retrieved through the endocatch. Pretty much anastomosis is done here. We like to reinforce our anterior surface of the anastomosis with interrupted non-absorbable suture. There's no data, it just makes us feel better in redo cases. And leak test airtight anastomosis. And we usually place a distal uh, remnant gastrostomy tube for feeding purposes, decompression purposes. Uh, she did well postoperatively. Final pathology was consistent of T3 and one uh, disease. She completed the course of chemo radiation six months ago, currently disease free. Uh, in conclusion, we believe that uh, laparoscopic gastrectomy for oncologic purposes in a patient who had previous open wound by gastric bypass is safe, feasible and uh, similar oncologic results can be achieved as it would be done through the open procedure. Thanks for your attention. I have a, uh, I want to ask you a question first. Uh, was the intent of your operation strictly palliative? Because if it was anything other than that, I would submit that perhaps you didn't do the oncologic operation that uh, typically would be done open, which would include a celiac node dissection and probably total gastrectomy with resection of the distal remnant to increase node clearance. Well, I would say probably the intention was palliative disease rather than because node was positive, yes. We didn't do a, like a celiac node dissection because of the difficulty of the previous procedures. The origin of the cancer was in the pouch or in the remnant, can you tell? It was in the pouch. It wasn't because the remnant was pathologically cleared once we divided. It was. So gastric uh, remnant cancers, of course, are a common, they recognize late complication after many non-bariatric gastric operations. Uh, and it, increasingly, they're being reported many years after different gastric operations for bariatric in, intents. Uh, do you have any uh, long-term follow-up policy on your bypass patients? Uh, 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 do you make any recommendations to them for uh, endoscopic surveillance many years down the road? Uh, I'm not aware of the policy of that in our department. If, uh, I mean, we routinely follow our patients long-term in terms of symptoms and weight loss, but in terms of uh, uh, cancer surveillance for the remnant, I'm not aware of it. And, uh, I, oh, is there someone at the microphone there? I can't see. Yes. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Yeah. Microphone. Hello, hello. Good. 
Yeah, uh, could you tell us how you assess the margins in this pa the patient who had a submucosal cancer, particularly if you see that you left quite a bit of stomach at the top? Yeah, as I mentioned, I mean, we had about four to five centimeter proximally margin, which we presumed that should be more than enough, and the pathologically confirmed that the margins were negative with four or five centimeters. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mm.